All right, well, um, just a little bit about me. I am the dean, and if you're not familiar of, uh, of what, what a dean is, think of a principal at your high school. Um, I'm essentially in charge of all of the operations, um, range, you know, spreading and across the spectrum from teaching all the way to research as well as facilities and um, making our programs move forward towards new and um, exciting things. So it's all about you, the students, and the students and their loved ones. So that's what we're here today, is to really talk to you about what it is that um, is the School of Science and Technology at Sonoma State. So me personally, I have a PhD in computer science and um, joined the computer science faculty in 1994. And so I'm celebrating um, 25 years now at Sonoma State, and I have been dean for the last 10 years. So the first thing to talk about is sort of what is the School of Science and Technology? So you're probably familiar from your campuses um, on how the whole campus is uh, divided up into disciplines or departments. Well, similar thing happens in the School of Science and Technology. We are divided up into departments, but then we still work as a unit. Um, and in the School of Science Tech and Technology, there's sort of three bubbles. The first is our physical and life sciences, sort of in the um, lime green. And in that grouping, we place the departments of biology, chemistry, geology, math and statistics, as well as physics and astronomy. The other prong or leg of our school has to do with really the more health science folks. That's kinesiology and nursing. But of course, biology, chemistry majors, less often geology and physics majors, um, they also pursue health tracks as well. So there's more overlapping than this picture may actually suggest. And then in our third prong, we have our tech, our computer science and engineering arm. And those two departments are um, also something that um, I'll dig into a little bit more with you on all of these. Um, and also on campus in our school, we have two uh, additional centers or programs, the Education and Public Outreach Group, as well as the Center for Environmental Inquiry. And I hope to talk about both of those a little bit more as we go on. So now that you have a sense of kind of how we're set up, what I want you to have even a better sense of is what are we about? What is it that we value? Why, why do faculty come to Sonoma State to be part of it? Why, most importantly, why do students? And I think that as you are hearing me share with you and as you're um, participating in other parts of this virtual Seawolf Decision Day, what I think you'll hear over and over again is that we care about our students. And it's really, I can see our faculty, um, Dr. Herring and Dr. Lillig, nodding in agreement, because that's why we're here. We've really devoted ourselves to you and to really helping you propel yourselves towards your dreams. So we really are proud of the fact that we have small class sizes, that we really emphasize hands-on and we do that through laboratory clinical internship all sorts of engagement with the community and then our faculty they are um, phd trained they have doctorates they have really become experts in their fields but they are yet driven by a passion that really goes to their core that they're dedicated to their students we have facilities um, that are very much set up in a way that we have our students getting engaged with instruments. So for example, we have a scanning electron microscope, which on many campuses, undergraduates are not even allowed to come up and look at the door that it's in, contained in, right? But for us, our undergrads come in, they get to use the scanning electron microscope. They get to get onto the NMR and our faculty fight very hard to make sure that that's a priority within our school. Um, a lot of learning by do, doing and very active classrooms, even in this virtual setting that we've had to move to on a fairly short notice, we're still working with faculty that want to engage their students. Um, our students themselves are super engaged, lots of academic support, which I'll tell you a lot about, and then also career and grad school preparation. So on the Sonoma State campus, which if we were there today, what you would see is that the School of Science and Tech is actually um, in many parts of the campus. Our main building is Darwin Hall, and that is one of the um, biggest buildings on campus, and we are in all parts of it. I have another picture of it, I'll show you. But we also are in Salazar Hall for engineering. We're over in the PE complexes for kinesiology, 
nursing is in Nichols Hall, and we also have the um, uh, education and public outreach group in the makerspace over in the library, as well as an observatory, greenhouses, all of these pieces. So what about Darwin Hall? What does it look like? Well, it's um, four stories. One is down in the basement, and this is how um, it's organized. And on the third floor, we have physics and astronomy and chemistry. Um, on the second floor, biology. First floor is where my office is, as well as the advisor's office that runs for the entire school. All, all our faculty advise as well. Um, computer science and geology and math and stats. And in the basement, we have several labs and a museum. So what do these programs look like? Well, there is the biology department. I've listed the degrees there. Um, a bachelor's of arts and a bachelor's of science in biology. Again, emphasizing what they value is the small class size and lots and lots of laboratory and field research opportunities. And our students go off and do all sorts of interesting things. Um, I have another slide to actually drive that home, but I want to tell you what these two pictures are about. The upper picture is um, a group of students that are actually in a freshman level class um, that are satisfying the biology re requirement, but they're up at our Fairfield Osborne Preserve, which is about 10 minutes from campus and it's 450 acres. I'll talk about it a little bit later as well. And um, in the bottom there, that is Dr. Dan Crocker. And what he does is he studies the metabolism of um, elephant seals. And so he is there with a group of his students, including graduate students who are um, looking at, well, they're taking a couple blood samples, which then they take back to the lab to study. So this is um, an example of the kind of experience our biology students have. And then I love this slide because it's really hard when someone says, well, what can I do with a biology degree? Well, a lot of, lot of different fields and um, careers are accessible to folks with a biology degree. And this, I think, drives this home is that there's a lot of different opportunities. And our chemistry department. So this is Dr. Lillig's department. And I love this slide because of the picture in the upper right. Um, Chemists, they love to blow things up. And when you're a dean of a school of science and tech, this really um, is something that you want to make sure happens safely, of course. But what I love about this picture are, is a couple things. Number one, the um, young woman in the uh, lab coat, she is doing this work along with other students um, about doing outreach for um, elementary school, I believe they're second graders, that come to campus um, during, is it mole day? Chemistry week, yes. And they um, get um, ex exposed and get an experience with the uh, undergraduate students showing them around and doing several experiments. The other piece about that is the window behind um, the, in the back on the left there, that's my office. And so they now let me know ahead of time when they're gonna blow stuff up right outside my window. And um, below, you'll see two students who are proudly presenting their work. Our uh, chemistry department offers degrees in both biochemistry and chemistry, but they really emphasize a lot of um, individual exploration by students. And so their students are very um, much engaged from the get-go in communities around asking questions, feeling comfortable and confident in what you know and don't know. So that's really what they focus on. Um, this picture is Karn Works Lab. So it's kind of a, a giveaway right away, but one of the things I love to ask about this, if I haven't put the title on the top, is who is the scientist in this picture? And the answer should be everybody, okay? So that's really key. But then who is the faculty member? Who is the one who is mentoring and leading this research group? Well, again, you could say the mentoring is probably happening peer to peer, students together. But one of the things I don't want you to do is jump to the conclusion that it's the um, fella in the back, because that would be wrong, right? But he's a student and really engaged and doing a lot of great work. The faculty member in this shot is actually the second from the left, and that's Dr. Dr. Carmen Works. She is also the department chair, has a National Science Foundation grant that she is pursuing some research question where it's all about engaging the students in those questions. Um, the next department I want to talk about is geology. 
so geology is something that um, is a really interesting field just from volcanoes to earthquakes all across the board. But it's particularly special on our campus because of the way that department runs. They really stress a lot of field work and preparation for the licensure that a licensed geologist must have to really practice in the field of geology. Um, and if you think about how interesting California is as a geological place, um, there is a ton to see, there's a ton to research and investigate. And that's what this department does brings in their students as they're pursuing degrees of earth science and geology and really sets them up to look at questions of climate change, of natural hazards, water issues, resources, um, study resources like energy, gravel, precious metals. Um, but it's a field that many of our students don't know about as they come in. And so I really um, encourage students to take a geology course as part of their general education because they don't know if they're going to get turned on to something like that until they take it. And as an example for from my own experience, which is, you know, a long time ago, but still relevant in the sense that I went to college undeclared and it was a general education class in computing, computing, you know, programming that um, exposed me to a real interest that I had around the creativity and problem solving that you can explore with computer science. So this is an example of a department that um, if you're leaning towards the sciences, you may want to um, discover as well. This is our math and stats department page. This is um, Dr. Herring's hometown and um, an incredible community here, not only for their majors, um, but also for the foundational work they do across all of the science majors, science and tech majors, right? Math is a foundational discipline as well as a discipline of its own. So they uh, provide degrees in math as well as statistics. And that a lot of possible career paths, we've listed a few here, but they're also looking at in the, in the coming year, um, putting into place a data science degree and so Dr. Herring is leading up that effort. So there will also be that. But what, so that's the curriculum and the, the dedication of the students and faculty is incredible. But the community of students is really cool too. And I love the picture here because of the group of students standing under that chart. It may look like it's meant to be a math chart. It's not. Um, that's all part of our tracking of what we call Geek Week. And Geek Week happens in the spring. Um, it's around Pi Day in March. And the different student clubs um, compete against each other for the Darwin Cup, which is this cool trophy that we keep um, and travels between the department and student clubs as they compete in things like egg drop and um, tug of war and things like that. So um, that is our Geek Week. And that, in that picture, the math, uh, math students had won. Um, getting to know our school too is really about getting to know our faculty. So I thought I'd include a couple pictures of um, a couple of our newer faculty. And so Dr. Omaida Ortega, she joined us. She's um, got a lot of experience in industry, particularly in the healthcare and data sciences. And um, her work is so linked to um, studying the disease of um, you know, the spread of contagious disease. So she has had students, you know, well before this. COVID situation that we find ourselves in, she has had students working and modeling on the spread of various diseases as part of their courses and uh, presenting that work in our science symposium, which is um, a, a gathering we have in the spring where students showcase their research. And we typically have about, oh, in a typical year, about 140 or 50 posters but with about 400 students, because many students will be participating together on a single poster. Um, this year, we will be presenting that symposium um, virtually. It will be an asynchronous um, presentation. So it's something you can just go and look at some of the products that students are producing in terms of research, in terms of um, uh, capstone projects, and in, in those kinds of terms. So uh, that will be available on our website. And then Dr. Rodrigo Gaetan, he does a lot of work um, in an area that's more obscure, but what is so special about our faculty is they take something that I know very little about, gamma processes, and most students don't know much about, but they take it and they use it in applied areas that allows our students to have access to questions that are really interesting and applied. 
but bring in some really heavy duty math that they like, oh, aha, you know, they make those connections. And I love that he loves working with students. And that is why we, he came to Sonoma State was this opportunity to work with students. The next slide is actually a little video that we have from a student. So this is our first video in this presentation. Hopefully it all goes smoothly. Um, I'm gonna hit, hit click and have you enjoy. What I really like about Sonoma State is all the opportunities that I've had. Um, coming in as a first year freshman, I didn't expect myself to be as involved as I have been. Um, being having, having had a role at, in a club, being a tutor, having been a tutor, um, currently being a resident advisor, being my third year doing being a resident advisor, that you know, there's a lot of experiences and opportunities that the campus has for students outside the classroom. And I think that's a really valuable um, thing that Sonoma State has um, and that there is a lot of student leadership and involvement that occurs. But then also being that the institution is, is a you know, more teaching focused school that I've had really great educational experiences with the faculty and within my department that I am in as a math major. And I've just really enjoyed, you know, having a great, great educational experience, but as well as being able to be involved as a student and work with students and helping other students um, who are also going through their um, undergraduate career. Great, that was Jorge. And he works a lot with, I think you'll see his picture again, he works as part of our BASA program as well. Okay, physics and astronomy. This is um, in that cluster of the physical and life sciences. This is um, also in that group. And what you see again, I think in all of these pictures is you see uh, students really engaging with the work, not just with a textbook, but with the work. And all of this work is continued even in this virtual environment. The picture at the bottom um, is on, on the right hand side, what is that little thing? That, that is called a, a CubeSat. Um, the SAT part stands for satellite. Okay, and cube, it's, think of it, it's the size of a pound of butter, right? It's not a huge thing. And um, so our students have worked together with students from other campuses to build this CubeSat. It's now in its third iteration or third generation that gets shot up in a rocket. It's then um, uh, circling the earth and collecting various data that is then downloaded to um, a satellite or uh, an antenna on campus that they are um, studying the magnetic field of, field of the uh, Earth. Oh, and I should also mention on the upper left, um, I know it doesn't make sense for me to point at the screen, but it's hard not to. Um, uh, the upper left, that is Dr. Scott Severson working with a student. He does um, adaptive optics for his work, and he is the current department chair of that department. Computer science, so this is my, um, uh, roots and we have students who are pursuing a lot of different areas and very successfully um, entering into the workforce and um, as software engineers, web de designers, game developers, cybersecurity, lots of different areas. Um, and I have a couple slides on them. I, I'm going to go into engineering then we'll come back a little bit. Um, engineering, we offer a bachelor's degree in electrical. And we have a master's in computer and engineering science. Um, our program is really distinguished because of its emphasis on the hands-on as well as healthcare devices. Um, small uh, sensors used for various things. Um, uh, I have a slide I'll show you as an example, but the work in sort of that lane very much aligns with several of our industries that are nearby. And so our students have several industry partners when they're working on various um, projects. In the lower right of this slide, you can meet the department chairs on the right, that's Fareed Farman. In the center is Dr. Sarah Cassis. And then on the left is Dr. Um, Sudhir Shrestha. And these are some of the faculty that you would work with in engineering, super dedicated to our students. Here is an example of these health devices um, that the engineering students have worked on. And it was an interdisciplinary project. So the engineering students really worked on um, this glove that has multiple sensors in it that can do a couple things that can measure um, uh, motion, okay? And then as well as gather um, data about how intense is that motion, right? Is it happening? How intense is it? 
and then taking that information to and gathering it in um, a software platform that was worked on with the engineers as well as the computer scientists to, pro to provide an interface to um, the, folk, the folks wearing the glove as well as the physicians and primarily for um, diseases like Parkinson's disease where you can imagine going to a doctor and saying, oh, you know, my, you know, how are your tremors doing? And they might say, oh, better or worse, but how much or how often are they happening? How severe are they? This allows for that kind of study. So that's an example of a kind of project. And that particular project was taken to a system wide. So the California State University system has 23 campuses and um, Sonoma State is sort of a small, medium sized campus in that um, network. And in this competition that took the project beyond just um, the technical experience to how would you kind of promote this out as a, a product, the entrepreneurial piece. And so um, they were in this competition called the I, I core competition. They actually brought home the first prize. So in the picture there, you see the interdisciplinary team, the um, young man on the left is an engineer, the uh, young woman in the middle, she's actually a kinesiology major who's looking at movement. On the right is a computer scientist. And um, I have my view a little bit obscured because I'm seeing participants here. But the, who do you think is in the center with their arms, arms wide open? That's the business major. So, um, <laughs> so that's the group. And here's an example of, um, this is a reunion photo a couple of years ago, um, but I have a couple, there are several students that then go and work very um, much in industry that's nearby and they are very closely knit group. So they gather every year and this has just happened to be the photo I had most readily on my computer to add to today, so. And here's an example, again, of a faculty member, someone that our students would be working very closely with. This, this is uh, Dr. Anna Mary Lale, and she comes from Virginia Tech. And again, she loves working with students. Um, but her research is in that computer interaction piece, right? HCI, you know, how do you build technology to really maximize um, the user's engagement with it? And she works very much in, in um, building and crafting. <laughs> and she has a background in costumes. So she is um, our faculty liaison, our faculty lead on um, a very innovative space called our SSU, well, Sonoma State University Makerspace. It's on the second floor of the library and was funded through a, a large grant from the National Science Foundation. The kind of space that we created here was really meant to feel like a like a warming warming studio much less like a machine shop which many maker spaces feel like much more welcoming much more um encouraging of just the creativity that goes around it and dr lale who you met on the previous slide she teaches for us a course called science 220 it's dream make and innovate and um, it's a course that students take from um different parts of campus but many science and tech majors it satisfies a general education requirement as well and really allows students to explore some um, really um, self-directed projects um, in the makerspace and even in this virtual um, pivot that we've had to do dr lale has created kits that have gone home with students and really allowed for that transition to happen um, almost seamlessly. So students are getting a really wonderful experience despite the change and disruption. Here is another initiative on campus that really speaks to our values. And um, I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit, you're going to hear me talking in the video, so I might as well just shut up right now and let you go for it. So here we go. State is a really special place. We spend a lot of time thinking about the success of our students, what it is that we can do to help them really achieve the goals and dreams that they're going after. The Sit With Me campaign gives the Noma State University an opportunity to tell the world what our values are. At Sonoma State University, we value equity, we value access, and we value inclusion. Here at Sonoma State, we care deeply, I care as president deeply about 
making sure that we have an inclusive environment, campus environment, that supports everyone, faculty, staff, students. I love the new things that we're doing that are exciting to students, the, our maker spaces, are things that are bringing young people. I, I really love seeing seventh and eighth grade young girls into that space and exploring and trying things that they never tried before. Here at Sonoma State, we have a solar regatta challenge. It's about creating a solar powered boat. And we have a team that has both men and women on the team. And I think the automatic assumption was in the competition that men would be the ones behind the, the rudder on the boat. And it really took someone like me saying, you know what, I want to see a woman in that role. When that happened, she won the race. I think it's really having others, not just the women and girls themselves saying, I want that opportunity, but for those around them to say, you should go after that opportunity and, and really provide them with the confidence and encouragement to take on some of those leadership roles. When they come here to Sonoma State, we work extra hard to really have them feel included in our classrooms, in the curriculum that we provide, in the problems that we ask them to solve and that we challenge them by, the leadership opportunities we give them. And I think that's the beauty and that's what I love about Sonoma State is that we embrace all, we really open our doors and hope that everyone will come here and enrich the community and we make it better by being even more inclusive, by seeing more women in STEM areas, by seeing more women go into technology and IT and that excites me. So please join us. So I was, uh, as I was setting up this video, I didn't do um, enough to let you know what to expect. So what is the Sit With Me campaign? This is um, also linked to the Red Chair campaign. It's really about just talking um, about broadening participation, particularly of women in the tech fields. And so as part of that campaign, Sonoma State has engaged in the conversation and had the Red Chair come to several um, events and allowed us to sort of talk about what does it mean to have um, everyone participating in the technology fields. Here are a couple more pictures from that particular regatta where they brought home um, in a remarkable four trophies. I don't know how it's possible, but um, at the same time, what we really saw were all the students um, on this team lifting one another um, and pursuing really kind of challenging situations. So um, uh, one of the things that happened in this particular race was the boat um, flipped over and it flooded the engine of the um, little boat there of the canoe. And th so they had to very quickly work on rebuilding the engine and together they had the thing running again um, and actually won that next race that they put the boat into. So that's pretty neat. Um, another prong of those three prongs, right? So now we're looking at nursing and kinesiology. So our nursing program has a pre-nursing um, track. That's what where our freshmen are admitted to is the pre-nursing. At the junior level, there is a pre-licensure program that um, takes students then that are prepared to the bachelor's degree in nursing. But we also have a post-licensure program. So those are folks who are already RNs registered nurses who come and then finish a degree in a bachelor's degree in nursing. We have a master's family nurse practitioner program, as well as a post-master's degree for those who have another master's but want to add the nurse practitioner. This is a great video from our nursing um, students. They put this together for you, for you today. So I'm going to go ahead and let them talk about their program. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Sukronik. Hi, my name is Kaylee Matanke. I'm Jasmine Casillas. And we are all fourth year nursing students at Sonoma State who are going to be graduating this May. We all started our nursing careers here at Sonoma State as pre-nursing students and got accepted into the program in two years. And we just want to tell you today why we chose Sonoma State. One of the reasons why I chose Sonoma State was because the nursing program here has such a stellar reputation. And in fact, this year we were ranked as the highest uh, BSN program in the whole state of California. 
One reason why I chose Sonoma State is because our classes are reserved for the pre-nursing students. The prerequisites that every nursing school needs, they save a spot specifically for pre-nursing students prior to opening these classes up to any other major. It is a seriously great benefit so that you are able to graduate and get into the program in four years, like we did. And I chose Sonoma State because as soon as I stepped on campus, I just felt at home. I've appreciated being part of such a beautiful community and feeling part of a really awesome nursing family in my time here. The fellow students on campus are incredible. The faculty are incredible. They are always on our side. They are always supporting us and they are always doing everything they can to make sure that we succeed. And we're also very fortunate that because we are a small nursing program, that means that we can all form really incredible personal connections with our faculty that will last long after we graduate. So happy Sea Wolf Decision Day. We hope that you will be joining our Sea Wolf family very soon. This is the start of an incredible journey. I know I speak for all three of us when I say that these past four years have been truly, truly incredible. So enjoy the ride. Good luck, Sea Wolves! Wonderful. Okay, so I'll do a little quick check-in with Dr. Lillig and Dr. Herring. Anything coming up that we need to be aware of? I see the chat's kind of cranking along. Everything okay? Yeah, everything's good. We're getting some good questions that I'm putting together for you. Great, wonderful. Okay, we'll click on to the next slide. Let's see, give me a minute here. There we go. All right, now moving on to the kinesiology department, also part of that wing of the um, health sciences, if you will. Uh, we'll have this introduced by the chair of that department, Dr. Stephen Winter. So he's going to talk with you for a moment. Hi, here. Dr. Stephen V. Winter, kinesiology department chair. I wish I could have met you in person, but I'm so glad to be a little part of the Seawolf Decision Day. Kinesiology is a great major for people that are thinking healthcare fields. About 90% of our majors go into healthcare fields where they need a master's or doctorate to be that professional, such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, chiropractor, physician assistant, dietitian, athletic trainer. And about another 10% of our majors become other healthcare professionals that don't necessarily need an advanced degree, such as personal fitness trainer, strength and conditioning specialist, coaching, um, and even things like radiology technician and a host of other different healthcare fields. Great. Let me move on here to. Hi. Oops. Dr. Stevens. So what you saw him talk about in that was some of the careers that folks go into. And you can see in the bottom right, that's Dr. Bulent Sokman working with a student on a study. He's an exercise scientist and um, working with a student on some research around uh, athlete performance and caffeine. This next video is from one of our students in the kinesiology department. So I'll let her tell you about it. I feel like all of the professors and students that I have met in my department have been really great people to work with. I've like had a great opportunity to job shadow our head strength and conditioning coach here and that was a great opportunity for me to get involved within my major and to like really decide that I do want to do um, physical therapy so that was great for me and the students that I've met have by far been like the greatest connections um, whether it's through work through student outreach or um, my friends and other things like that too. a sense of the kinesiology department and we also have at Sonoma State a health professions advisory program where we really do um, support our students who are on um, a pathway towards a professional degree in one of the health um, sciences such as medicine dentistry and so on I talked about the strong student community um, where we have students who really feel comfortable working with one another, asking questions, getting help. Um, the sciences and these fields are often challenging and we want to be able to support each other as we are pursuing these degrees and our um, different goals that we set for ourselves. 
We have several student clubs. That's the math club in the upper right. They, um, they usually have a pumpkin carving uh, fundraiser in the fall that is a lot of fun for folks. But we also have all these other clubs that our students are very much engaged. It allows them to really connect to their department and their peers in their majors. I wanted to mention uh, fairly quickly, but for the freshmen, we, there are several uh, freshman learning communities on campus. And um, uh, here are three that are, are mostly focused in the School of Science and Tech, but that doesn't mean that you, you have to choose one of these. Students can choose any that they want, but these are three that we um, kind of offer from our school and are in charge of. So the first one is uh, a new program that we were just awarded a million dollar grant, grant from the Coret Foundation to offer this um, year long program for this first year. I wanna make sure um, it's very clear that it's for biology majors. They will be the ones who will be admitted um, and, but students will have to um, apply and express an interest in joining. And what is it? It's this integration of, um, community, you know, building together a group of students who work together uh, and feel supported by that group. They're doing research and um, being engaged in the outdoors up at our preserves. It in consists of a summer academy, a one week immersion that will happen right before the semester begins, as well as a seminar that will be um, partnered with their first core biology course that will run through the year. So um, for details, you can go to this website or reach out to um, the email that's provided there. Um, but, and this will, of course, this one week immersion would be done um, virtually if that's what um, this, the fall looks like. We also have what's called a watershed year. Again, it's a year long course. This one is really working on um, research work around water and water as, um, questions come up about water in all different fields. In geology, it's about the size of sediment and what does that mean about the health of a waterway. In uh, mathematics, it's talking about flow and what are the mathematics that go into understanding flow. Um, this is not a good fit for, uh, uh, however, for biology because it, biology majors, because it does meet the biology general education requirement, but isn't the right first course if you're going into the biology major. Um, going on then to also biochemistry and chemistry, they have a faculty learning community which takes um, a chemistry course in sort of uh, critical thinking and um, oral communication, but uh, found the foundation pieces of it are in chemistry, coupled with a math and transition curriculum that is, composes their freshman learning community. And it's very inc much encouraged for anyone who is majoring in chemistry and biochemistry or biochemistry. Yes, and Dr. Lilig's like, yeah. I mentioned the preserves and I wanted to um, take a few minutes with a video here. So we have three preserves, um, actually four, but the one really small, but three primary ones that um, are associated with our campus and give us about 4,000 acres of really wonderful, pristine, um, um, outdoors, uh, untouched uh, land for our students to investigate various questions. The one closest to campus is the Fairfield Osborne Preserve that I've mentioned. So we engage very often on just even just going up there for a couple hours and back because it's just 10 minutes away. The Galbraith is um, uh, 3,600 acres up about an hour away, hour and a half away hour and 15 minutes away. So this tells us a bit more about it in this next video um, that I will go to next. And um, this is about the Center for Environmental Inquiry. What is that? Well, if this is um, a center that's not just the preserves and taking care of the preserves and managing the preserves, but also all of the programming that goes along to really engage our students, our faculty, but then our broader community in these, um, these beautiful lands. So let's see what we have here from them. What are we growing at the Center for Environmental Inquiry? With the Center for Environmental Inquiry, Sonoma State is making environmental understanding integral to a university education, no matter what your degree. We're growing skills. 
We partner with regional employers to provide students in the arts, humanities, and sciences with skill building experiences at Sonoma State's 4,000 acres of preserves. These include internships, training programs, and both scientific and creative inquiry projects. Students get to develop highly sought after skills while employers get access to a workforce that's ready to take on environmental challenges from day one. Working with the center as an educator, we are able to help students learn the things that they can't learn in the classroom. growing innovation. We are providing the student opportunities to work on cutting edge technologies. We're growing careers. My experience has been that the students that are coming out of Sonoma State now have a skill set that's uh, actually above and beyond some of the skill sets I'm seeing coming out of other schools. Without a doubt, my experience at the center was key to helping me find a job. The professional experience that they're getting really gives them a leg up being able to get a job in this competitive marketplace. We're growing community. One of our most exciting projects was the Soundscape Project, a dance production that engaged students from engineering science, environmental studies, and theater arts. We get to bring all sorts of people together in this program. Students, professionals, and community members. At the end of the experience, we all have a common goal. We believe the center serves as a model for a 21st century education. We want to give our students more than just a degree. We want to give them hands-on experiences working with our community to solve its toughest challenges. What are we growing at the center? Innovators, problem solvers, and leaders. People who are going to make the world a better place. We're growing. We're growing a whole new approach. A whole new approach to environmental leadership. So definitely a pretty special resource and place on camp or near campus that we engage our students. And what you heard there again was that emphasis on um, taking students into career. So internship opportunities. Here's a list of some of the uh, companies that we have our students engaged with. And then also um, a couple uh, students, alumni, that I just thought I'd share little quotes from them here and there. This one I included because it really comes to this point. Fabian um, is one of our math graduates and he talks about, um, you know, he can't forget that first day of the semester um, in his Math 220 course when Dr. Brigitte Lama approached me after class and really asked me what I wanted to do with his degree, right? And that kind of engagement, faculty going and really reaching out to students and really caring is something that um, distinguishes our campus. And this student, Megan Humphrey, she is pursuing her a medical degree over at UC Davis. And she talks about, you know, starting college being a little bit um, unsure about what she wanted to pursue as far as a major. And she says, it wasn't until I enrolled in a GE science course that I found my true direction. So my whole life changed and I found myself in love with biology and science in general. And that allowed her to pursue her passions that she didn't even know she had. And so I think one of the things we also want to, you know, really make sure it, uh, folks feel comfortable with is a, a bit of uncertainty, right? We, we aren't for sure certain when we're um, just uh, embarking on our college careers exactly where it is we're going to head and where we're going to end up. And that's part of our commitment to supporting you and working with you is helping you to figure out what that will look like. And so Megan, you know, really found her passion in medicine and worked very closely with faculty to get there um, and is now in her uh, studies for her medical degree. Here are a couple other pictures, you know, partly for fun, but also to partly tell you the story of our campus. Um, uh, on the left, this is uh, Maya Ayala, 
and she is now getting her doctorate of physical therapy down at San Diego State. But she um, was uh, one of our kinesiology students and worked on a research project with Dr. Sokman. Up above in the center, that's a really, really old picture, but it always makes me smile and laugh. But this is Joanne Drayson. Um, this is when I was um, about 10 years ago on the computer science faculty. And this was part of Pi Day. We still have this tradition. And Joe now works for Mercedes Benz. He works on the graphical interface. But when he was a student of mine, he was just so into computer graphics. And I worked with him on several independent, independent projects that um, allowed him to really explore and strengthen those muscles. Um, and then down on the bottom right, that's um, Heather and Austin Griffith. They're both um, graduates of our um, programs at Sonoma State Biology, both of them. But Dr. Lillig is smiling because she had both of them in her chemistry courses. Um, Dr. Griffith, Austin Griffith, he's my dentist. So there I am in his dentist chair. And um, both are practicing in uh, Petaluma and Santa Rosa here. And, um, you know, good news, no cavities. But very proud uh, of our graduates and the work that they do in our communities. I want to be conscious and careful of the time because I know you have other events after this, but I'm going to move um, quickly through some other resources that we have. We have a very strong um, student success network of programming that we've talked about, I think, you know, touched slightly upon in the earlier slides. One of those programs is our MESA program and um, creating a lot of infrastructure, community, and support for our students that are, you know, many are their first generation, first, you know, member of their family to come to campus, and many are dealing with other challenges in terms of their college um, pathway. We also, let's see, we also have a very committed academic advising team. So our faculty really work very closely once students are in the major and know where they want to go in terms of their degree. Um, and consult very closely with faculty. But we also have an advising team for the earlier years that allows and supports students to really navigate their way from high school into their degrees. And talking a little bit more about that, some of the different supporting services, tutoring, counseling, health center that we have on campus um, that are part of the other presentations you'll see today. Here is the schedule at a glance that is part of the, that is making up the virtual sessions today. Um, the next session start at 1130. Um, but I wanted to assure you that, you know, you select one that you want to go to, but they're all being recorded. And so that if you would like to learn more about um, uh, the health and wellness at Sonoma State, but you also want to know about financial aid, you can actually, you know, at a later time, come back and look at that, those others that you didn't have time to look at. Here are some of the contacts that are for questions that um, I feel like I'm not an expert in um, and so would want to direct you towards these folks in terms of, you know, questions about um, the admissions process, you know, specifics about financial aid and um, Barbara Godoy, who's the um, right most bottom right number that I gave you there. She heads up our um, admissions and enrollment and her contact information is there and she said please reach out to her with anything that you feel didn't get answered you can reach out to her and she will make sure you get your questions answered and then that brings us to the questions phase um, and uh, I'm going to work with Dr. Lillig we're going to try to figure out the best way to come about doing this but I want to make sure you saw our emails there so that if something somehow slipped through the cracks and we didn't get to you today that you had our contact information that first is our URL of our school website in case you need to take a, well, I recommend that you take a look and dig around in there because there's a lot more information. And then um, the, the slide that I'll stall on and just sort of have there as we go to questions, this lists our departments and provides you with a phone number and email for contacting them. In some cases, it's a department email that will right away be um, attended to by folks in the department. And in others, it's the email of the department chair. Um, that's their preferred contact. So um, those are the pieces um, of our presentation. And I just want to say as we conclude here, um, thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to learn about our school. Um, we are really incredibly proud of it and we really hope you will come join us because um, the kind of education that you'll get here 
will be one that will help you propel yourself towards this next stage of your life. So thank you so much. And um, with that, I will work with Dr. Lillig to try to address some of the questions that have been coming up. Well, I have to say, I really hope you guys are thinking about coming to Sonoma State because your level engagement is so high that you're going to do quite well if you can keep <laughs> that up. So um, let me, I put some uh, questions into grouping. So I'm going to pass these on one at a time to Dean Stoffer. And if it's not getting answered, the questions that you had, just send another message in the chat and we'll regroup. Um, so how about for the first one, quite a few questions about students knowing what courses they're going to take in the fall um, across majors, geology, computer science, how do they know their prerequisite coursework that they're going to need? Very good. So um, would be something really natural that you wouldn't have all the details of yet. Okay, but what we have is a um, an, uh, program over the summer called summer orientation, where students will be working through several pieces and modules of information about you know the campus in general what are the different resources what is the process of registering for fall but then also getting into the nitty-gritty of what are the courses that you need what are the academics that you need within your in your degree now that work will be done um, there's sort of information that's very um, foundational very scaffold type of information like well you need to take english you need to take math you need to take this but then there will also be information about what is it that I need to do as I propel myself in a degree. Now that information will depend on where you're at in your preparation. Um, the very, the very um, standard generic version of that is called the four year plan. And that is available in our campus catalog. So if you go to the Sonoma State website and search under letter C, and look for catalog, you can look there to your program and within each program will be a four year academic plan. And so the first semester, the second semester, your whole four years will be there. But of course that will need to be special tailored to you, right? So if in um, high school you've managed to really excel in a particular area, then perhaps it wouldn't be appropriate for you to start with the first course that's listed in that semester. Or let's perhaps say that maybe you took a, some, a year of chemistry, but you don't feel that your foundation was strong enough. Maybe you'll need to take Chem 110 before you jump into general chemistry. So that kind of special tailoring will happen through advising sessions that will be taking place, as well as you taking um, steps to reach out to advisors who will also be reaching out to you as well. So the fall plans will start to take shape more as the summer orientation information is shared with you. Do you think I touched enough of that, Jen? Do you think, Dr. Lillig? I think so. I'm not seeing any more questions coming okay. right now um, on that piece, but I will keep an eye out. Um, how about some questions about applying to some of the impacted programs? So for example, students are wanting to know about um, how do they switch into the kinesiology major? Um, is it possible to declare the nursing, the pre-nursing major when they get there? And how does, as a follow-up, acceptance, for example, to um, health programs turn out for our Sonoma State students? Okay, so really good question. So impacted programs are, um, there's, there are unique processes for each one, right? So in our school, biology, kinesiology, and nursing are our impacted programs. Now, nursing is impacted at both the pre-nursing, which is the freshman level, as well as at the junior level. So let me put off nursing for just a moment because it really is um, a special case because there is so much interest biology and kinesiology you can apply to get into those programs once you get here even now if you really feel like oh i need to be in biology or kinesiology those were the programs that i should have applied for it's time now to go ahead and contact those departments you can see the information here that you can write to them and say oh you know i i would really like to be a biology major how do i go about doing that it can um, range from the possibility and the recommendation that hey, let's wait till fall and you're on campus, but let's go ahead and have you sign up for these courses that keep you on track. Or um, it might say, you know, kinesiology has a certain time frame that they work around. So they accept applications for changing major around October. So the thing is for those to definitely contact the department. 
Now for nursing, it's still true. You should contact the department. They can give you the best advice, but um, they have a certain, uh, what do they call it? I, they have a term for it, but they're, for the junior level getting into the true nursing program, there is a point system about how students can maximize their access to the program or their possibilities of getting in. And that I don't know the specifics of, I don't have the expertise, but definitely the nursing department can provide that to you or it's on the nursing website, they can provide you more information. And then I think as part of your question, Dr. Lilig, or the question was, how do students do in terms of getting into professional schools? Yes, and yes. I would say the fact that we are able to work so closely with our students um, that when they are preparing to apply to a um, professional school, they have a much, um, they have like a one on one relationship with faculty where they are talking with those faculty, they are getting letters of reference from those faculty, and um, those faculty can talk specifically about those students' experiences and strengths. And, um, beyond that, the health professions advisory program that we have um, does a preparation for students applying to professional schools where they actually do mock interviews and um, review all of the students' materials. And then from those mock interviews, the, the uh, review board of faculty, they together write a letter of reference for the student. So um, because you have this very close relationship with faculty, you um, are in a situation where you have folks to ask for those recommendations. Now, um, on much larger campuses, I mean, this is a real advantage of a campus like ours. Um, students will get to that senior year and they will not have a relationship with a faculty member. It may be with a graduate student. It may not be with very many um, folks that are in a position to help them make that transition. That is not the case at Sonoma State. So um, when someone calls and asks um, Dr. Herring, I need a student to work on the statistics project for this local firm, who do you have? She knows the students and can very much say, yep, this is the student for you. They have a real interest in this area. Um, I will you know, make sure that they are connected with you. So that I think is um, how we help students make that move. And could you add on a little bit about internships, perhaps at that point as well? Yeah, so internships uh, are really the opportunity for our students to get into um, positions that are linked to local business, industry, and so on. So they, they take all sorts of shapes and forms. So kinesiology, for example, um, students are required to have a field experience. Now, that may be in a medical setting for someone who is thinking about physical therapy, but for a student who's thinking about coaching or lifetime fitness of some kind, it may be more appropriate that it's part of a, um, a, an exercise program somewhere in some community-based uh, exercise program. So there's a wide range. Um, our internship program is one that, uh, allows for that kind of flexibility so that folks can find the right kind of fit that works for them um, and can even occur on campus. There are internships on campus that students could be interning with, for example, the Center for Environmental Inquiry, doing um, some of the work around educational outreach. They have a lot of elementary school students come to visit the preserves and the students that are trained as um, docents there can give those presentations as part of their internship and part of their building of saying, hey, I know how to present. I know how to collaborate with a group. I'm comfortable in that leadership role. So um, a real range. Okay. Um, how about questions? There's been some about how will students know which math and English course they're supposed to take when they get here? When does that information come? That is a really good question because there's a lot kind of up in the air around that, right? I'm not dodging the question, but I don't um, believe there's a ton of certainty at this point, but I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Herring in case you know something more, Dr. Herring, than I do about that. Um, yeah, so at least for math, what happens is based on what courses you have in high school and your GPA and SATs and any AP exam classes that you've had, anything like that, you're put into a placement and the same kind of thing happens with your English. So over the summer, you'll be notified as to where you're placed. Um, what Dr. Stoffer is talking about is because of the shelter in place, a lot of the measurements we usually use are gonna be delayed. 
So there's a lot of concern about exactly when we'll know student placements. Normally we would know them before you came on, on campus for summer orientation, which now summer orientation is all going to be virtual. And when exactly we're going to get the numbers are going to be a little up in the air. But we'll definitely have everybody placed by the end of summer and if necessary we'll kind of move people around. The goal really is to make sure that students get into the right class. So we don't want anybody in over their head, but we also don't want anybody wasting time getting started too low in a class. So the, the placement is very important that we get to place in that right class um, from the very beginning. Yeah, and the point that I would emphasize that you did, Dr. Herring, is that we we are flexible, right? So we don't want students really in a panic that, oh boy, I got put in Calc 4. What am I doing at Calc 4, right? Of course, <laughs> you know, we are here. We will put you in the right place. Maybe you need to be in more of a developmental mathematics to get you to that Calc 4 on your path, right? But we want to make sure that you know that you have that, that uh, personal support that we will get you into the right class. And I want everyone to know, just like Dr. Stoffer said, come and talk to us. If you feel, I always tell students in the first couple of weeks of the, of the semester, if that class seems like it's going too fast for you, talk to your professor. Say, hey, I think I've been placed in too high of a course. Or likewise, if you think things are moving too slowly, maybe talk to your professor. We can always move you around. We can talk to you, find out what your background is and get you into that right course. Nothing is set in stone. Yeah. See those first couple of weeks go and let us know if we can help you get into a different math course or any other course. Yeah. Okay, um, next group of questions. Uh, could you say something a little bit more about uh, what small class sizes look like and about how um, successful SST students are in getting the courses that they need to progress um, towards their degree? Very good. So um, what do we mean by small class? Well, it really, it ranges as you can imagine. Um, all of our lab courses uh, are, I would say the majority of our lab classes are 24 students. Now that would be different for, I can't remember what chemistry it is, Dr. Lillick, but there's a chemistry class with a fume hoods and the groups have to be in a smaller group. And I think it's 18 for that. Um, yeah. there's another, there are other classes where there are instruments that students are being taught about how to use the instrument and a number more like 10 or 12 is appropriate. And so it really ranges. And then we actually have some courses in physics, for example, for graduating seniors or our physics graduating classes small that there might be six students in a class. Now, what do we mean by a big class? Now we do have what I would consider big classes on campus, um, Darwin 101, uh, 103, excuse me, which is a, a main lecture hall in all our building, fits 125 students. And really that's you know, considered big by us. But typically what happens, let's suppose it's a general biology class, you'll be in a lecture that is 125, and then you will break off into you know, labs that only have 24 students. And um, that, that would be sort of the example of what, what the range looks like. And then I forget what the other part of that question was. Oh, about getting classes. So, um, this, this is how to really think about it. I think Dr. Herring kind of gave you the, um, the behind the scenes. So we're a small, medium-sized campus. So we don't offer 400 sections of 400 student calculus classes. We really try to tailor to, we believe we're gonna have this many students. We only allow 25 students in our, 25 to 30 students in our calculus classes. Um, and so we're making, you know, a very educated guess based on projections about how many students we need, uh, you know, need to serve. But then, of course, we're keeping track of a wait list. And that wait list, as we see it going, oh, there's only four people on it. Oh, we can squeeze them into the sections we've got. Oh, there's 24 people on that wait list. Let's open another section. So we micromanage our schedule down to the individual student where we're making sure that students get into our classes. So um, I can say with really... Uh, great confidence that we do not hold up students from graduation by them not having access to a class. Okay, um, I'm getting some questions about just concerns that there might be um, lower grades uh, coming out of high school because of this, this switch pivot to distance learning and questions about how Sonoma State might be looking at those grades in light of this crisis. Right, so um, 
I'll get to that in one second. I wanted to add that if you look at graduation rates within the CSU, Sonoma State has some of the highest uh, graduation rates. And I think it comes to that individualized, we really pay attention to every situation and do our best to serve those students. And that comes back to this question as well, right? The last thing that we want to do is to put students who have had this unexpected um, situation put onto them to somehow then not set them up for success. So we are doing everything um, possible to support our students, understand what their situation is based on what happened this semester for them, and to best set them up. Again, it's not about trying to find a way to push them back. It's about finding a way to allow them to be where they should be so that they can be successful. So um, I really like the way Dr. Herring put it. It's like, we don't want you in over your head, but we don't want you to feel that you're not progressing either. So that takes some work to figure where that is. And because of the way that we structure our campus, we can actually have those conversations and figure that out with students. And then there's been uh, quite a few questions about um, uh, how students change their major in general and, and when is it a good time, like if they're undeclared, how long do they have? Could you speak a little bit on that and how people switch from major to major? Yeah, well, do you want to take that one just and to also, mix it up? And we also thank you to, to Ariana, who's pointing out that the next session is going to start soon. Yeah, so we'll, we'll wrap it up. We better, let's make, let's make this our last question, but I'll let you take it because you do a lot of advising for students. Um, you know, we want you to get into the major that's good, you're going to be passionate about because that's what you're going to be successful in. So the best way to do that is to seek advising early and to seek advising often. So if you don't know who to talk to, you can always go to Megan, who's our advisor on the first floor of Darwin Hall. You can go to any department and ask, who do you talk to, even if it's not in that department, or you can find your, ask your professor. You can say, I'm not sure what I'm interested in, or I wanna be a computer science major, and that faculty member will help you get to where you need to go. Um, so, and, and they can also, once you get to that right department, we can look at what coursework you've taken, what coursework you would need to take to switch majors to get you on the right path. But the best way to do it is to seek advising early. And then once you get in that major to pursue advising at least once a semester. Wonderful, well, thank you. And um, I know that we have other lingering questions, but please, you have our contact information, you have the department information. I just wanna thank each one of you for being part of this and a special thanks to my, my colleagues here for being part of it. It's been a real pleasure to um, spend this time with you. So I wish you all the best and, and congratulations on these next steps that you choose to take. And bye bye. Check back on the SSU website for those of you looking for access to these Zooms to watch them again. Oh, great. Yes. Thank you for the reminder. The recorded sessions on SSU website. Wonderful. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.